when you um, went through that process with your spinal injury, how did, I mean, like, after my meditations, I really get into this, like, uh, I, I, my, my emotions are quite high. I get all this energy, and I truly believe, however, that then come, when I have to do certain things, like go, go into the bathroom, like when I need to use a catheter and stuff like that, I, I, I then notice my energy going down. I mean, I suppose my question is, how do you deal with those? Um, well, how did you get past that? And is it just a matter of just that high belief? Well, and look, <clears throat> there's no doubt that one of the more difficult injuries that a human being could have is a spinal cord injury because you're, you're basically, uh, the spinal cord is an extension of the brain. It's a fiber optic cable that intervenes different systems in the body. So that's the highway. That, that, that passage of information from the brain to the tissue passes through the central nervous system. And so when I broke my back, uh, I had some significant amount of pain. I had a lot of fractures. Uh, and I had some cord pressure. And, um, and I had some sensory and motor trouble as well. And. Um, you know, when you're at that point in your life, and I'm sure you know this, uh, where people don't want to relate with you any longer. You know, they just don't want to relate with you because they don't want to have to make a decision that you have to make. So I could see discomfort on everybody's eyes when they were around me because they just wanted to return back to their lives, you know, and I understand that. And when you have an injury like this, it becomes kind of an alone process. You have, you have your friends, you have people that you love, the people that take care of you, but there's still you different uh, from everybody else, and that's a huge challenge. The second thing is, is that you live in a body, and so it's very common for us, and I did this for quite a long time with my own injury, you're always checking the cupboards. You're always checking to see if there's some change. You're always checking, you're always checking, you're always checking. And again, when you're checking, you're not fully engaged uh, in the process. You're not becoming the deed. I will tell you that not only just me, but there have been other people that have been wheelchair bound that have had significant changes in bowel function and bladder function, in sensory disturbances or uh, uh, loss of sensory information. Uh, some motor function changes. Uh, uh, we've had people have um, a lot of a clonus or the stiffness in their legs from uh, spinal cord injury uh, diminish quite a bit. But I want to be very clear that a spinal cord injury is in chemistry, hardware, molecules, matter is not going to change matter. It's just not going to work that way. In a spinal cord energy, uh, uh, injury, it has to be energy. That energy is the phenomenon above matter. And that when you see people that have had um, spinal cord injuries or strokes or neurological problems, when you see them healed, you know then that uh, it's possible for you. And we're starting to see more and more people, not only in the work that they do in their own meditations, but also in the coherence healing. So you've been at this, I'm assuming, just for a short amount of time, yes? Nearly three years. Three years. And doing the work. Oh, wait, oh, no, I thought you meant the injury. So, no, I've been at the, um, so doing your work for six months now. Okay, so six months. So that's a solid amount of time uh, for you to begin to know how to do it. So when you come back to your body, and this happened to me so many times, I'd always check to see if there was any improvement. And then if there was an improvement, then I would feel discouraged. I would get, uh, my energy would drop. Uh, I didn't think it was possible any longer. I'd give up. I'd get angry. I'd get I didn't want to see anybody, you know, uh, and, and then I realized that I had to change that, and then I kept working on it. But, you know, um, for me personally, uh, I had to get so caught up in two things that I just worked on that I just had to be completely present with that intelligence that I worked on it every day that I just kept believing that it was real, that I was going to have a relationship with it, that I was going to make time for it, that I had to decide what I was going to bring to connect with it. That was, a, it was, that was the, my reasoning at the time. That if it was an intelligence, and intelligence is consciousness, and consciousness is awareness, and awareness is paying attention, it's got to be paying attention to me. 
So I gotta pay attention to it and I gotta be present with it. And you know when someone's present with you in your life because they're paying attention to you. And you know when they're not present with you in your life because they're not paying attention to you. Well, the divine is the same way. That people start off and they're present and the next thing their mind moves somewhere else and it's the act of making that change. And, and when you have a trauma or a crisis or a, an injury, we always tend to focus on what we don't want to have happen instead of what we do want to have happen because that's what the hormones of stress do. They prepare us for the worst. So turning that battleship around is a huge act of will because you start off with good intentions and then you check to see if something's happened or you start off with good intentions and you start thinking, am I going to live like this the rest of my life? Your mind keeps running back to that question. So when you start getting beyond that question, uh, and you stop checking and you just start, keep doing the work with more intensity and you keep connecting That's what it's going to take for you to begin to have changes the checking means that you're waltzing taking that one step forward and the one step back I would suggest that When you connect to that unified field when you truly truly connect and you have the opportunity to bring that energy into your body, I would just keep bringing that energy into your body. I would just keep raising the frequency of your body and just keep working with it. And I, would, I wouldn't care how long it took, I would just practice getting better at that. And if you keep getting better of drawing energy from the field into your body, sooner or later you're gonna raise the frequency of it and that nervous system will switch on. And what kind of changes will you see? Well, in the beginning, it's just those quick electric shocks that people have. I mean, <clears throat> some people have the energy move through their, through their joints uh, that have been stiff or frozen, and they start feeling these articulation releases. I mean, we've seen all kinds of things like that. But for you, uh, six months into this, after a three-year injury, it's going to take a little bit of time because it's so easy to check in with your body after you have a meditation and realize nothing changed. But how do you know? How do you know nothing changed? How do you know you just made some change, but it wasn't enough to, to tip the scale, but it's part of tipping the scale? I would get caught up in the effort. I would get completely caught up in the act. I would completely get better at drawing energy from the field into my body, and I would feel it in every part of my body. And just keep working with that. Begin to raise its frequency. So I had many dark nights. Uh, in my own injury uh, because n not a lot of people want to be in your position and I can tell you that and so but there are people in this work that are at it that are making small strides and we only need one person to do it and once we have one person do it then it's going to be the new normal because other people are going to begin to do it so see yourself as a leader and showing people how to do this.